Hey everyone, what is it that recruiters always ask? They always ask, how many years of experience do you have? Because as we all know, if you have more years of experience, then you will be a better employee than someone who has less years of experience, right? Let's dive in. Welcome to my video. I am Bill, the company's expert, and today we're going to talk about the truth about hiring, or in particular, the truth about recruiters and their favorite metric, years of experience. Let's dive in. Okay, I just want to start off by saying that I understand the reasoning. Okay, number one, for entry level jobs, okay, the metric of years of experience, that is not completely useless. It tends to indicate how much onboarding a company would have to do before they can get that employee over the learning curve and to the point where they're adding value. Okay, that and a few other things, you know, the met this metric is useful for. And beyond simple situations like that, if you're talking about, you know, jobs in general, maybe not entry level, but higher, you know, years of experience, it tends to indicate certain things. It tends to, it tends to suggest that if you've been doing a job for a long time, presumably you've learned all facets of the job, right? Surely you have, presumably you have, right? It also, it also does things like it demonstrates your commitment to the job, at least it could be interpreted in the way that it demonstrates your commitment to the job. And, you know, it also proves reliability, among other things. You know, if you've been in a job for a long time, you know, it proves you're reliable. You haven't been fired. You haven't left. Right. So it could be interpreted as proving reliability. Now, those of us that are steeped in the theory of this, this is how you think. And this is how recruiters are often taught, okay? But I think those of us who live in the real world, we know that it is certainly possible for a person to be in a job for a long time and yet be incompetent. And then years later, that person will apply for a job and get it over a person who's much more competent simply by virtue of the fact that that person who applied and they have more experience, it's because they have more experience. So they get it. It's like a sort of throwback to seniority systems and things like this that have, uh, in most cases, fallen from favor. Now, I feel I can talk about this issue. I'm a former CEO. I've hired people. I've fired people. I've evaluated people. I've promoted people. I've done exit interviews with people. Uh, I've trained people. And... I currently teach recruiters in a university, so I feel like I can talk about this issue. And I feel that HR has a long way to go to really assess people properly. Now, it's funny because, uh, you know, a lot of recruiters use this metric as their litmus test to see if a candidate is a good employee or not. And the more years of experience you have, is the higher they rank you. And, uh, They've been doing this for years, and in a lot of cases, they've been doing a terrible job of evaluating people, and this is one of the reasons why. You know, I always ask, if someone has 20 years of experience, and I see that on a resume, just, just me, personally, I always ask, you know, do you really have 20 years experience, or do you have one year experience times 20? Because if you've just been doing that one thing for 20 years, I mean... If you've just been doing the same thing over and over, is it really worth 20 years of experience? There are other people that have been doing several jobs, you know, in the same time, and they have learned so much more because they've seen so many things. They've seen alternate ways of doing things. You know, you got to really wonder if 20 years experience doing the same thing over and over again is really worth 20 years when we use this metric. Um... I would put to you that often this is not very accurate. Now, my question to you today on this reverse Q&A, which I love doing, I love doing these videos, okay? I'm going to I'm going to give you two questions here. Number 1, do you feel that years of experience is an accurate assessment of your abilities? 
That's the first question I'm going to put to you guys. And I'm interested to hear your answers. Please leave an answer in the comments on what you think. Now, that's the first question, okay? Do you feel that this metric is an accurate assessment of your abilities? And then number two, the second question I'd like to throw at you is if you don't agree that this metric is the way to go, what would you suggest? Okay, what would be a good way of assessing your abilities? Okay, that's a, quite a fascinating question. We've known for years that job interviews are notoriously bad at assessing, you know, the capabilities of an employee. Um, the problem is they're kind of the only thing we have or, you know, the most practical solution that we have. Now, just to lead you off in perhaps answering, I'm going to throw a couple of uh my personal opinions at you or things that could be valid just to sort of you know stimulate some discussion here now uh usually in job interviews recruiters in general are looking at two things they're looking at education and they're looking at experience okay and behind the scenes these are things that they focus a lot of their efforts on verifying through references and other other means uh education and experience I've always felt, and this is not original to me, I've always felt that the third element that oftentimes is missed is personality. You know, nobody really assesses personality. Certainly, at anything less than executive recruiters, they tend to often not go out of their way to even think about this. I feel that personality is by far the most important dimension to assessing a candidate. Um, so, perhaps... Uh, that might be a factor in how you assess somebody. I'll leave it to you guys, what you think. Um, another one would be a track record of success in other areas, right? So maybe you haven't done a certain job for very long. Maybe you've done it before, but you know you haven't been doing it for very long. However, you have a track record of success in other areas. Being thrown into a situation, proving that you're highly trainable, overcoming obstacles, and figuring it out to the point where you've had a lot of achievements. Just because they're not directly pertinent to the job in question, does that mean that all this stuff should be ignored? Maybe that's something that you could also use to assess somebody. I put that to you. And finally, you know, could you use al alternative, alternative metrics instead of years of experience? You know, um, could you use something else? Or something that I've always advocated for, especially in higher level positions, is the hiring manager spending a lot of time with each candidate and having more informal conversations in more informal settings to really get to know the candidate. Now, I know that a lot of detractors for that will point out, and rightly so, that it is a lot more time consuming. It's a lot more labor intensive, and they're correct. However, you know what's even more labor intensive? Hiring the wrong person and then having to go through this whole process again six months later. So uh, these are some maybe food for thought, hopefully. I'm interested to hear what you guys think. What do you think of this metric and are there alternatives? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. I do appreciate everybody who comments. I appreciate the support you guys are giving me by doing that and taking your time to do this. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell and all that kind of stuff. And you guys are doubly awesome for responding. And I will see you on the next video. Take care.